you know what? You still look good after all these years. Oh, hey everyone, this is Joe from Match Next. Welcome to What's on the Super. Welcome back, if you're joining us yet again, um, to our special sp sub-series of What's on the Super, where I review each and every episode of the High School Musical, the musical, the series, the last the, the last episode of 2019. It's freaking crazy that we're already at the end of 2019. It's not the last episode, though. We still have two more episodes in the, in the new year to um, look forward to. And it's going to very much be different than I expected, but we'll get to more of that in a moment. Um, but before I begin the episode review proper, like I said before, if you had watched last week's episode review, or um, I talked about how I watched the High School Musical, the musical, the special on ABC Disney. Well, it was on Disney Plus, but it was originally airing on ABC, and um, I was enjoying it. Um, very much respecting the cast. There wasn't really much um, I can remember from the special, the second part of it, that I didn't um, gloss over besides that it's it's still pretty cool that Disney gave um the actors the actors and actress for Ricky and Nini a chance to um demonstrate their music proudness by creating an entire original song for the show freaking awesome thing Disney did um I think it's going to be in the show later on so it's gonna be very cool or if they had premiered it I'm sorry if I missed it um I don't remember what the song they wrote was but um shout out to Disney for allowing them to do that and kind of like dip their toes into the musical side of things um well, the music side of things in terms of the of the business. Um, I'm very much enjoying that. And also, like I had promised everyone um, when I started this review series, but I did not get to it until literally the Christmas break, was that I was going to rewatch the High School Musical trilogy as sort of the kind of like be back in the know-how about the characters, about the story, about the music, stuff like that, kind of appreciate more. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I loved seeing the original trilogy. Again, I loved every movie. Um... I feel like it's one of my guilty pleasures seeing High School Musical because I don't know why. It's just something with musicals that um, affect me so. And I really love the story. I really affect, enjoy, enjoy the characters. Um, I was watching them on Disney+. Plus, So some of them were a little bit more extended. They had the extended scenes from DVD releases to the, the, to, to make it the official version of the movie. Which I pretty much think it's, um, it's awesome. So um, that was cool to get to see again. Um, which also is serendipitous because of this episode's special cameo appearance, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, I enjoy the High School Musical trilogy again. I might do an independent movie review at some point in the next year, but who knows? There's a lot of stuff going on, uh, but we'll get more about next year, next time. Um, but anyway, let's get to it. Um, this is also the last What's on the Tube for 2019. It's freaking crazy how the journey... Uh, for this year is over, but we have a whole year of what's on the tube to come in 2020. But en enough about me tooting my own horn. Let's get down to the actual episode review, starting with the Butcher recap. Um, <clears throat> so as remember, if you guys remember from last week's episode, there was a fire hazard to be started about um, in the school because of Miss Chen and the douchebag teacher's um, sleepiness. Um, so it did end in a fire um, that only affected, sadly the backstage of the theater so the fire department's finishing up the work from the weekend and the british concluding that these this is not oper this is not going to be operational in time for the musical so the students miss jen are all on edge and like trying to figure out what to do meanwhile in ricky's head he's more thinking about about gina who um last week got the revelation that she is going to have to leave um the school by in a couple weeks um so it's very much of a um of a downer spot for um, Ricky, considering the fact Ricky is, I believe, still trying to figure out if she... He cares for Gina. It's still not clear if he actually has any romantic interest in her just yet. Um, so it's a very it's a very difficult time for Ricky, but eventually he gets his head in the game with the musical. Um, also, fun of it to note, and a, kind of a weird decision. I'm not sure if this was because of the writing or maybe the actress or stuff like that. Gina's not in this episode. She's not. Which, I get, I, I think it's to get every, the other characters a little bit more of the focus. Because there's only so... It's a half-hour show. There's only so much focus you can go around without really stuffing the episode off and kind of, like, just putting too much um, know-how on the characters. So, was it a right move to kind of bench Gina for the episode? I think so. She's not... I, I, I really don't know. It, it, it's fine. I mean, I think we... Last week was such her episode that I guess taking a break to kind of, like, actually realize that she's actually really being affected by it, that she, w she had no role to play at all in this episode was, um was very point guard in my opinion. Um, so everyone's trying to figure out who, um, where to go because like they still want to do the musical, but they they kind of like at a point where it's like, where are we gonna have it? And they eventually uh, start coming up with guesses, and it's like, no, we can't use this place. No, we can't use that place. And uh, eventually, um, Carlos has the idea where his uncle owns a theater, but Miss Jen is not really entirely on board with it. 
but they're getting it for free. So they say, she says, screw it. We're taking the Peter. So, <clears throat> oh, sorry, my throat is, again, I just came back from work. Um, I'm really, really tired. Got this hot, hot ass tea. Can't drink that yet. Anywho, um, back to it. So everyone's kind of like, we're getting packed up, getting ready to move out to the, um, to this other theater. And seems like, again, like I explained last week, is that we're sort of in an identity crisis with EJ, where his role in this episode is kind of like, I appreciate the direction he's going. I don't think it is the direction he should be going, or me, I mean, at least this is, this is a part of where he's, of he's heading off to next. So we see EJ having this red container that was apparently, that's apparently being moved over to the next theater. But Carlos is a little bit more protected over that. And he kind of lets slip that it comes with everything that Miss Jen needs to make the musical happen. The the director's sheets, the, I believe, the vocal sheets, the music track, and of course her notes from the audition. Now EJ is very more um, curious about that because he's really curious to see how did he lose the opportunity to play Troy and not and to, to Ricky, like, which kind of, if you think about it, kind of led to the events of him in his current status right now. So, but anyway, everyone... Um, gets to meet up in the feeder. They're all kind of a little bit, like, creeped out the fact this has not been used in, like, years, which I'm curious, like, how does the owner is able to pay his bills if there's no production going on or whatever? Anyway, um, so everyone's trying to figure it out. It's a more an old-fashioned feeder, so not one of the more up-to-date ones that their feeder was. So they're trying to figure things out, and EJ manages to get the notes, and he, re and he learns that while he was nearly perfect for the role of Troy, he was missing an emotional connection. So he was missing emotions. Sounds like he went to the um, the Mega Force Choice School of Acting. Sorry, about, sorry about that, um, Andrew Gray. I'm sorry. I I, I don't know you. Uh, I have no I have no ill will to you. You just anyway. Um, so he kind of gets a little, a little bit distraught about this um revelation. Though, not not really a revelation, but more like a um kind of like a step back. It's like this is kind of not what I was expecting. But anywho, he takes this to heart a little bit. And I believe this is where, no, 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 no. Okay, so this is where everyone's trying to figure out the light situation, the sound, the sound system, and Miss Jen gets the bright idea of like, hey, listen, um, Ricky and Nina, you're gonna go go off to an independent room in the theater, so you guys can like learn the the, the play inside out. And obviously, given how things were last week, it's not entirely a hundred percent well between the two of them, considering the fact the last time they talked to each other, Ricky kind of went off on Nini. A little bit. So things are not exactly um, peaceful between them. So they awkwardly head off to another room. While everyone's kind of just trying to figure out how the hell they're going to get this performed um, done. Um, Ricky and Nina have a slight like gripe issue in the beginning. Because like they're trying to get their their real emotions out. Where they're currently at with, between each other. Um, but they get a little bit more playful as um, it goes on. Um, I'm trying to see. Uh, it's Oh yeah. So it's obviously clear that Big Red and... Uh, I forgot her name. Ashley. I want to say Ashley. Ashley. Um, EJ's cousin. So obviously they they were they were slowly beginning to have a thing from the last week's episode. It's slowly continuing. It's not the front center with this episode, but it's sort of getting more and more, um, up to it. Um, but Miss Jen is trying to figure stuff out, and EJ is using this opportunity to kind of like showcase his emotional talent. Where it's it's very clear, like. This is not how you how you change a teacher's mind. This is not how you do it, EJ. Because I knew his. This is not genuine acting. I'm not an actor, and I and I've seen a lot of TV to know what real acting is. What he was doing was not real acting. This was not emotional acting. This was just him forcing everything. And they no what not no eh, no dud Jen did Miss Jen did even bother um, paying attention to him because it, it's just not genuine. Um, and then eventually. Um, Nini's fr best friend, she kind of has like this, um, uh, this chorus voice. So she kind of sings a rendition of one of the songs from the original High School Musical. I forgot which one it was, but it impresses the hell out of everyone. It's like, holy damn, she can fucking sing. Um, but then we get back to Ricky and Nini who are having a bit of a, like, they're, they're, they're doing the rehearsal. They're trying to figure, figure the flow of things. And Ricky, and Nick, they're kind of like beginning to have like a back and forth about their memories. And Ricky brings up the um, the time where he did not say "I love you" back to Nini, which kind of like ruins the whole like oh memory happiness memory train. It kind of like stops it, stops it right there. Um, anywho, so we eventually get back to the group. Um, EJ's kind of like a little bit depressed the fact that um, oh no, well first Miss Jack kind of dismisses everyone because she needs a moment to kind of figure out how to handle things. 
um, EJ kind of slums with a bag of popcorn, which, is that popcorn stale? Because if they haven't been operational in four years, wouldn't that popcorn be, like, fucking disgusting? And they're eating it? Anyway, EJ's trying to explain to Carlos that, hey, listen, I can't be emotional, but a lot of stuff has been happening, but Carlos is not having any of that. Um, but then eventually, um, we come back to Ms. Jen, we, which we eventually realize the whole truth well, the whole truth about why she's not against this theater. This was apparently the theater they used for the Utah premiere of High School Musical. And Ms. Jim wasn't lying when she said she was in the movie. But the problem is she had a line with Ryan during the cafeteria scene. And they cut that out of the movie. So we get a flashback. And I'm going to be completely honest here. They should have recast her with a younger actress. It was just kind of funny that the fact they just aged her down. Not using the, the the current Marvel technology, but okay. Um, so it was kind of it was kind of a little funny to like her re see her young reaction where her scene was cut out of the movie without her being noticed. Uh, so it kind of like set her, set back her career because she was kind of hoping this line, this one little line in a High School Musical movie was gonna like kind of bonfire her career, which I'm like, okay, whatever you want to believe, man. Um, so she's kind of like trying to accept it and like being back in this theater and still being now a part of the high school musicals legacy so it's like she's trying to accept the fact that she's still being haunted by this like she was in the movie but no one got to see her scene and she's trying to like she's trying to like distance herself from everyone trying to figure out how to handle this and then she falls on her head okay that's very um very um serendipitous and then it turns out ryan appears well oh, actually lucas gabriel the second cameo, the second legacy character from the um, High School Musical days. Um, this one, this was more substantial. He had actually had a role to play. Um, I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Lucas Gabriel has aged pretty well. He has. It's a little bit chubbier, but I'm like I'm not complaining much. And it's like he still looks good. He still looks good for being thirty something. I'm not sure how old he is. I think he's thirty something. I should really look it up on Wikipedia before I had said something. Um, so he's tr Lucas is trying to. It's, it's so weird to call him Lucas. I'm so used to calling him Ryan. Okay, Real Ryan. I'm going to call him Real Ryan. Real Ryan is trying to convince Miss Jen, listen, I know this happened to you, but you can't really slum on it. Maybe these kids need you right now. And they break into a musical number. And it's it's a pretty good musical number. It's also, a, 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 it's obvious this is on a TV budget. So it's like, they're trying their very best to stretch the budget as they can. They can't do anything as flashy as they could in the, in the movies. Um, it was very tongue-in-cheek where we got to see the whole Ryan sign. Um, sort of thing. I would have been really down if they gave Ryan a movie spinoff because I know Sharpay had a spinoff. I didn't get to see that movie again from the, my rewatch. I don't think it's on Disney Plus. If it is, I'll probably not check it out because I, I did not enjoy that movie when I watched it as a kid, so I probably won't. But anyway, um, so they have this pretty very powerful musical number to kind of like convince Miss Jen, hey, listen, just because you weren't in the movie doesn't mean you can't, you know, still be valuable. These kids need you. You know the material. You're very passionate for them. And remembering back from the Trial Miss Jen episode, where it's like, they care about you. You need to care about that. You need to put the effort in. And it was working. We had a pretty banger musical. And then Carlos slaps the shit out of Miss Jen. <laughs> I'm sorry for my language. Um, he slaps her to kind of get her out of her funk. And it's like, okay, I know what we need to do. We need to go back to East High. And it's like, what? The, the, the feeder's out of commission. What the fuck you mean? You, we, you gotta go back. I mean, I get that you have this powerful moment, but still, you don't have a feeder. Anyway, we cut back to Ricky and Nini. They're they're kind of wrapping up their, like, little um, vocal warm-up, I guess. Um, and Ricky... I, mean, I don't know how this goes, but... They, Ricky was bringing up something about a crush. Not on Gina, but she, he was bringing up a crush about his first crush on Minnie Mouse. Yeah, very, very tongue-in-cheek Disney with your um, Disney references. And Needy, Needy kind of looks at him and it's like, well, and then he realized, well, it was my second crush. Obviously realized this, that his first crush was obviously Nini. And for a moment, Nini and him were about to kiss. But Big Red shows up, kind of ruins the moment about pizza. And um, the, the moment's kind of gone. They kind of just leave the whole, let's rehearse about the, the play thing. And they kind of they return back to the to their returning groups. And as everyone's packing up to go back to, to um, the school. And also another thing that I, I glossed over was that Nini did tell her best friend about um, the um, the brief thought that she wanted to go to the um, to the um, the, the youth uh, the youth actor program. And initially she's like not down for it because like she doesn't want to lose her best friend. But then after performing 
the song with in front of everyone else, kind of feeling how empowering that was. She kind of has a change of tune and calls the youth program to get a representative down there for the musical to kind of see Nini in action. And that's kind of where we um, end the episode. So uh, it was a pretty good episode, pretty good. Um, definitely a bit of a... I'm not saying this was a misstep of any means. I'm not saying that at all. I just felt like that this didn't really... Um, well, uh, let me just start with the positive, and maybe I'll change my mind on the, um, the Ryan music sequence was pretty cool. It was great to see him, to see Lucas Gabriel back in the high school musical world. Um, I felt like, yeah, um, Ricky, like, they, Ricky and Nini, they didn't necessarily pick up the character, the main characters in sort of a substantial way this episode. I mean, obviously, second questioning, Nini might still have feelings for Ricky. Ricky still might kind of, like, figuring things out still. He just, just still... We're still trying to find a real thing for for Eiji to do, cause like you just keep adding things on to his character. And it's like it's not sticking. I'm not complaining about him. I'm not complaining about the actors. It's like for me, it's not. I don't see where the character journey is going. I don't see it yet. And we're, since we're reaching the season finale, I'm not sure if we are going to see that this season. Um, Gina being out of the episode was definitely a good creative decision in terms of impacting the story. That Gina Gina's move is going to affect everything. With the musical, with Ricky, with everyone, so um, to make her make her lack of a presence known in this episode definitely spoke volumes to where things are going, and um, it was cool to get to get um, um, Nini's friend a brief moment to shine. This was mainly on the Miss Jen episode to kind of like face her demons and kind of like make sure she's moving forward by doing this musical. And yeah, that was it. I mean, I enjoyed the episode. It just didn't it didn't reach up to like where the emotional and the great and the more um, powerful stakes were in the last few the last um, the last few episodes. So again, it's my opinion, my opinion, and um, I still enjoy the episode. I still did. It's just it, it was still it was lacking. It was missing a little something. It was, and I think it was because they had to go back fully to the musical aspect, so we couldn't really get the character moments we got in the last couple of weeks. Well, we still did, but is this a, I think that, that the thing that I really, I, I don't know, it's weird. Like, I love the show when we're not really focused on the musical, but because I guess because they, they, they have to focus so much on the musical, it's kind of hard to kind of like fill in everything with the, with the moments we had in the more recent weeks. Okay, it's a, it's a me, it's a me mentality. That's what I'm thinking of. Right now, um, it's something against the show. I'm still enjoying the show. It's still a great show. It's just, that's where I am. That's where my head's at right now. Um, so hopefully, next week is the musical. Which is weird, because like, wouldn't they save the musical for the, the big season finale? But I guess they have something more bigger planned for the season, the season finale. Whenever, um, when after The week after. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how everything comes together next week. It's, it's, it's moving fast, which is, which is good. I would have really liked it if we kind of got another episode with just the characters, not focusing on the musical, which is a bit weird to say, considering the fact that this is High School Musical, the musical of the series, but um, just how I like this, just, just, just how I like my things, and I think that's gonna do it. I think that's it. I really enjoyed this episode. One foot, well, two foot, two foot. Two foot what, 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 what we say? Um, yeah. So that's really much it for this episode review. Um, anywho, if you want to know what's coming up in the long term, what's on the tube? This is it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Again, that's not the end of the show. This is our last episode for 2019. We will be back in full force in 2020. I'm so excited. Um, but I am not going to tell my plans yet. You'll have to watch the Action X State of the Channel update video coming out this, hopefully Friday. I'm not 100% guaranteed on that on that um, on that idea. But I'm gonna hopefully say Friday. Um, so stay tuned for that. We're, we're gonna talk about everything about what's in the tube, everything about Action X in general. So you want to stay tuned for that update video. You want to know everything that's coming up. But it's a brief, a brief, brief. Um, what was I gonna put that? A brief side thing. Um, so the plan is that when we come back, this is specifically for High School Musical, the music of the series. I'll tell about these plans. Since if you don't want to watch the update video because you, you don't really care much about our other stuff, you don't care about this, which I totally respect. I understand that. Um, so we'll be back next week with the next episode review, episode 9, and then the next week after that for episode 10. And then after that, we will be doing a season 1 review where we're going to review the entire first season, see where it, where it falls overall as a whole story. And then the week after that. So the whole week, the whole month, you're still going to get a High School Musical, the musical, the series, um, um, stuff from What's on the Two. 
Um, the last one for the month, we'll be talking about my expectations, predictions, hopes for season two. Whenever we get that season, which will probably be at the end of the year, at uh, the end of 2020. I don't know, really. We'll see how that goes. And then we'll, after that, we'll all talk about in the update video if you want to know what's going to come after that. When High School Musical, the musical, the series, is, the series um, um, edition of What's on the Tube comes to an end at, at the end of January. So stay tuned for that. But that was it for me, guys. I'm going to go. I got, I got some other stuff to do. So if you were unaware of this, what's what's on the two for Mashin X? Um, if you want to see more of this, subscribe, ring the ring the bell for notifications. Um, like, favor, share the video if you want to. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.